Hey folks, uh, this is Matt once again. I uh, just got done watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. This movie just fucking sucks. Now, okay, it's a prequel to the 2003 remake. It's directed by Jonathan Liebsman, who this guy has done better stuff. I like Darkness Falls, which he did before this. I like Battle Los Angeles, which the guy did after this. This, though, is just literally a waste of fucking time of a movie. I mean, it's. I don't know why it gets a 5.8 on IMDb. I really don't. How is it that this film gets so much fucking higher than Texas Chainsaw Master 2 with Dennis Hopper and Caroline Williams? I have no fucking idea. Even Part 3, Leatherface, uh, it's a much better fucking movie. This movie. I just don't, I don't know, I'm just, I know I'm pretty, this movie, I'm pausing because I'm trying to read up stuff, bottom line, this movie, it's a prequel that no one asked for, I don't give a fuck how many times these producers say, oh, we came up, people came up to us and asked, that family, that family, how did they get this, and how did he get the mask? And how did Leatherface get the chainsaw? Who the fuck cares? I mean, that's the whole the whole idea of the movie is a fucking waste of time. One, I'm not a fan of prequels. Two, it's a prequel that it's in the category of, of who gives a fuck. Right near Shit Creek and up a paddle. I mean, really, what all of oh, the answers that you find? All it is is he gets born. His late his mom was a fat lady. He got born in a slaughterhouse. He was disfigured, and the baby looks fucking stupid. Even though it's by Tim B, but the baby looks dumb. Gets thrown in the trash. Gets picked up, taken back. You see like brief like photographs of him growing up and all of a sudden he's an adult. They close the slaughterhouse. He gets pissed. He leaves. He comes back. He kills his boss. Hits him in the face. There's a chainsaw sitting there. He grabs it and walks away. Arlie Ermey goes with the cop who comes by saying, hey, your nephew killed someone. The cop finds Leatherface walking with a chainsaw. Stupid asshole leaves Arlie Ermey in there with the fucking shotgun on the fucking dashboard. Why would you not? If you have this big lumbering, who you call, this is, he calls him a retard. Why would you just take a pistol? Why don't you, the shotgun you have on your dashboard, why don't you take that too? I mean, I think a shotgun would be much better than a fucking little pistol. And why do you leave it right there on the dashboard where Arlie Ermey, who is a, f you may pretty much might as well call him a family member of Leatherface, is sitting there in the car with you. So of course Arlie Ermey grabs a shotgun, kills the sheriff, puts on his clothes. Wow. whoop the fuck do no. Did anyone really give a shit? How did he get the sheriff costume? Who gives a fuck? How did he get the chainsaw? It was there he took it. Wow, what a great fucking story. Great fucking story. What? Really? And all it is is just the same old typical teenagers. Uh, you have two guys and two girls. The two guys are brothers. One's been in Vietnam. is going to go back. The other is a younger brother who... The older brother thinks he's going to go with them, but he's not. He's going to go with his girlfriend to Mexico. These bikers give him a fucking hard time. They crash. Arlie Ermey shoots the biker chick that was going to rob him. 
the lead Jordana Bruce got thrown out of the trash. The other three get taken back. And basically they're beat the shit. Arlie Emery tries to get the younger brother to, you know, do push ups, beats him up. You have the dinner scene once a fucking again in every one of these fucking movies. You gotta have the dinner scene with a lady tied up like this. Every fucking, every fucking time. Seriously. Gee, how did the old guy get his legs off? You already knew Leatherface cut him off. If you, you already knew that. You could guess it. Fucking ten year old could guess it. Well, this biker guy is looking for his biker chick. Um, shoots the guy in one leg. Leatherface fights the guy, and he lands on the chainsaw. And Leatherface cuts him, so you see him kind of cut in half. Um, the older guy, who's a Vietnam vet, uh, he's tied up on, uh, laying down, and Leatherface just puts a chainsaw through him and takes his skin, and that's his first mask. Um, the other girl who's with them gets her throat cut. The, the younger guy, like Jordan Brusa, she just w looks around, looks around, tries to get her, the older brother, the Vietnam vet guy, out of it. She can't. She's under the table while he's getting killed. She escapes after the dinner scene. Leatherface chases after her. The younger brother wakes up, beats the fuck out of Arlie Ermy, doesn't break his neck or stab him, well, because it's a prequel, runs. And then he gets killed by Leatherface. She runs away. She is well and away, far up ahead of Leatherface. Gets in her car, drives like a few miles, and then Leatherface starts this fucking chainsaw from the back of her seat. Phew! And then she dies. I want to fucking pull out my dick and strangle myself with it, then watch this movie again. I know my friend, like, F3 likes this film. Alright. This film is, there's nothing to it. It's got some gore, but there's a hundred movies with gore in it. The story is pointless. The prequel that no one gives a fuck about. There was no mystery. He was born in a slaughterhouse. Like, this is like a fucking fan fiction writer could come up with more imaginative skills and storyline than whoever wrote this film. It's just the bare, like... The no shit theory. Oh, he was born in a slaughterhouse. No shit. I kind of figure that. He just finds a chainsaw. Oh, no shit. He born up, he was fucked up, born up. No shit. Uh... Arlie Ermey wasn't a real sheriff? No shit. That's all just a bunch of no shits. No shit, no shit. And it's you've seen this movie done before in the fucking first time in the 2003 movie, let alone the 1974 film. There's just nothing to this movie. You don't care about any of the characters. Jordana, Jordana Bruce is a horrible lead. She's You don't give a fuck about her. More like a damsel in distress than anything. Uh, yeah, the gore's there, but you saw that in the first movie. Well, I should say the 2003 movie, I should say. Um, Arlie Ermey is playing the same role. Nothing new to it. Bunch of questions at answered that you don't give a fuck about the questions, so you don't give a fuck about the answers. And you know, before you even see the first minute that everybody's going to die, that's a good guy. Because if they escaped, they would have told a cop or something, and they would have looked over and found that place. But they don't. So you know that everybody's going to die. That those four teeth are going to die. You know it in the, before you even watch the movie. So there's no suspense. 
Um, you took an idea that could have been cool. A Vietnam vet against a fucked up family? That's awesome. That'd be an awesome story. You get a group of people, but one of them happens to be a Vietnam vet. So that one fucks all these motherfuckers up. But you can't do that because it's a prequel. And, you know, they don't do anything with the guy. But I'm like, wow, you got a Vietnam vet? Against these guys? And it's like, you really do, you know, it's a prequel, so you can't. Is that such a, that'd be a good idea for a movie, a Vietnam vet against, you know, these motherfuckers? Yeah. But no, because it's a prequel, which I, I hate prequels. The store did nothing. Um, body count wise, I mean, I guess the, the four kids, the guy at the beginning who does head hit. The biker chair got shot. The sheriff who got shot. The biker guy who got cut. So what? Eight people probably. Bro. Who gives a fuck? You don't care about any of them. And the ending is just so extremely fucking stupid. Where she gets to this car. Now Andrew Bernarski is about six foot something. Six foot four. Six foot three. Six foot five. He's a big guy. He's what, 300 pounds? And he's got what, an 80 pound chainsaw? Yes, I know there are alternate endings where the guy come up with a knife. That's not what they use. They use the one with the chainsaw. So you got a 300 pound guy. Six foot three, two, five, whatever. Got an 80 pound chainsaw who somehow fit in the back of this car to the point where she went up to the car, even though she was well ahead of Leatherface, so he must have teleported in there. Didn't notice a hawking motherfucker with an eight pound chainsaw in the back seat. Drives. Da, 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 da. Somehow he was able to maneuver the chainsaw to behind her, rip the fucking chainsaw, and it worked, and it went through her. What? That is one of the dumbest fucking endings. As well as Down B, of course, but it's just one of the dumbest fucking endings. And they thought this was a good idea. A bunch of fucking grown men thought, well, gee, I know he's 300 pounds, he's six foot something, and it's a teeny ass fucking car, and he's got an 80 pound chainsaw, but oh well, oh well, let's shoot it anyway, keep it in the movie, da 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 da. Sorry, I'm not that fucking stupid. This movie, the John and Leesman, you could do better. You did better in Darkness Falls. You were going to do better in Battle of Los Angeles. I feel like I want to spit on this movie. It's a fucking worthless movie. Made for a book. To get a book. Which I'm sure he did. Because they make these movies fucking cheap anyway. But it just... It was pointless. It was a pointless film. It's a prequel that A... You already know that all the bad guys are going to live. All the good guys are going to die. So what the fuck is the point of the movie? There's no suspense. You know that the sheriff is not going to die. The other face is not going to die. You know that that guy has to have his legs taken off. It's like you know the movie before you even sat down to watch it. It's like I already know what's going to happen in this movie before I even pay money to go to the theater or pay money to rent it or whatever. That's what I mean. This is a definition of pointless. I can't believe there are people out there be like, man, I really wanted those answers. Really? Give me a break. There's nothing to this film. Shitty, pointless storyline. A prequel that has a definition of a pointless film. You know who's going to live. You know who's going to die. You know none of the baddies are going to die. You know all the good guys are going to die. There's no one likable in the film. You don't give a fuck about it, man. The lead actress is horrible. 
The score is nothing. The ending is pathetic and atrocious. It's atrocious. It's fucking stupid. You have an idea? Oh, you have Vietnam vet. No. First off, the guy looks looks fairly young. I'm sure maybe he's older, but he just you know when I think of a Vien guy who's been in Vietnam, he just I don't know why he just I don't just don't picture him. I don't know why. Um, I just this movie has nothing to offer. It's a waste of fucking time. And if you like the film, be my guest. I'm not going to hound you on it. But this film is fucking stupid. It's fucking dumb. It's fucking pointless and. I'm uh, just deleting something. Yeah. This movie is stupid. Why is it stupid? The ending! 300 pound guy! 80 pound chainsaw! 6 for 4, 6 for 3, 5, whatever the fuck! Hide behind a fucking car that she can't fucking notice! In the back seat! Someone use the chainsaw! Vroom! Vroom! You know what? You gotta pull the ripcord. Give me a fucking break. So this movie sucks my balls. Now, as for the future of the Chainsaw Master, I mean, this is why Chainsaw Master is not one of my favorite franchises. I'll be honest. I like the first two. Um, part three is okay. Part four sucks. The remake is okay. Uh, this film sucks balls. I know they're making a Leatherface, they're making a 3D movie, which I'm like, why, why do you need it? Tips to change on Mastery 3D. Lionsgate, October 5th, 2012, directed by the director of Takers. It's going to be a direct sequel to Hooper's 1974 original, which I'm like, why? Like, seriously, why? This girl picked up where the 1974 version left off following a young woman who hits a Texas girl at an inheritance only to find a family of chainsaw wielding maniacs. And it will be in 3D. This is fucking stupid idea. I know Bill Moses don't be in there. This is stupid. Now, some people are actually looking forward to this, really. But it's a direct sequel! So is part two! That was a sequel! It had the cook. It had the body of the fucking hitchhiker. And grandpa. It was a direct sequel and it was fucking good. What the fuck? Well, anyway. Well, anyway, fuck that movie. And thanks for watching my review of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. Stay tuned for other random reviews. Later. Hmm. <laughs>